Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Brian Thatcher, and welcome to Mercy Unbound, a series that aims to provide hope, an avenue for healing, and one that will help you understand and then live the great mercy of God. With me today, I've got uh, Terry Barber. It's a name many of you recognized. He's the founder of uh, several Catholic organizations. He's an international speaker and author, co-host of two radio shows. Married and he and his wife, Daniel, have four children. Uh, many of you recognize the name St. Joseph Communications. It's the largest Catholic audio and video reproduction and distribution company in the United States. We have a lot to discuss today, but I thought we'd focus on um, thoughts out of his book, How to Share Your Faith with Anyone, because I think most Catholics are so timid and afraid to share the truths of the church. Um, and it's really time in this country right now that we stand up and let the truth be known because the truth will set us free. And uh, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And uh, we need to speak the truth in love. So Terry, I understand you were a successful real estate agent in California. And at some point you received a calling because this has been a major change in your life here. You're off and running. And uh, I heard you speak recently in California at a conference. I was a speaker and I can just tell you're a... <laughs> Uh, double A personality, go, go, go. And you had a big transformation. How did all this take place? Well, Brian, thanks for joining, for having me on your show. Uh, yes, I was in real estate in 1980. I had been doing uh, cassette tapes of Archbishop Sheen in 1978 out of my garage, my parents' garage. And my dad was uh, very ill and I was taking care of him. And um, so I did really well for five years and 60 months. I was able to be one of the top producers in a small state of California. I was a door knocker. I evangelized through door knocking. And um, what happened is I learned a lot of good sales techniques from Al Tomsic, and it helped me in my sales ability to sell real estate. And then uh, when my father got really ill after five years of real estate, I moved back home to my parents' house and it's dedicated full time to his needs. But I also had uh, time to duplicate uh, cassette tapes of Fulton Sheen and other uh, terrific speakers. And it just kind of grew. St. St. Joseph Communication started back in 78. And uh, when I was going full time in it, it just took off. I met a guy by you might know named Dr. Scott Hahn back in 89. I recorded his conversion story and We've distributed over a million copies of that. And uh, God just used me in another way. And so I apply these principles that I learned in sales to share the gospel. And later in the show, we can talk about my book, How to Share Your Faith with Anyone, which I actually have on my website, virgin, most part of vmpr.org. People can get it for like $10. It's a $20 book at Ignatius, but Lighthouse ended up promoting it also. So you can get it that way. But um, my real estate background really helped me to understand that uh, people are in need of help. They need, they need Jesus more than they need real estate. So I decided to go full time in the late 80s uh, with my apostolate and things just kept growing. And, you know, um, Jeff Cavins, uh, people like Steve Ray, Alex Jones, Dr. Michael Barber, Dr. Brant Peach, all these people started coming to us and we started uh, replicating their cassette tapes. And then eventually in the 90s, it went into CDs. And now Lighthouse, we started, oh my gosh, after that. So it just, it just went on. But my real estate background helped me to become a good evangelist, to answer your question. You know, I don't think we'll ever know the extent of your reach with Lighthouse and all the churches and the CDs and all the tapes you've done over the years until you get on the other side, because uh, <laughs> it, it's just incredible. That well, as I mentioned, we, we spoke at a conference. It was a great conference, but maybe there was three, 400 people there, but the radio is what I always get excited about. I, I don't have the, um, calling to, to start radio or do a radio station or anything like that, but you've been so involved with radio and you can reach so many more people, can't you? Yeah. Uh, back in 1985, I wanted to, in the Holy Year that the Holy Father called for in 85, I thought it was a good time to start Catholic radio. Well, there was only five stations in the entire country. 
So I bought airtime on a Protestant station here in Southern California for like $600 an hour. I would play Bishop Sheen cassettes. And uh, that first day made it worthwhile because somebody called and said, look, I want to come back to the church. How do I do it? And so I asked him where we lived and I got a hold of the parish and we were able to get him to come back home. So even if nothing else worked, that one day was worth all the money and time we spent in radio. So basically, Catholic radio, I was involved with it at the very beginning. And uh, Doug Sherman from Immaculate Heart Radio, I worked tightly with him. And uh, now there's like six or 700 Catholic stations across America. And you're absolutely right. Uh, you never know. I've got hundreds of stories of people telling me that, you know, it saved their life or it saved their marriage or it saved them from living a decadent life. So Catholic radio is important today and it will be important tomorrow. What, what's the focus of the Virgin Most Powerful? Um... Yeah, you, you talked about it. Charity with clarity. We have vir the re Virgin Most Powerful Radio, because if you look at the exorcists, they say that title Virgin Most Powerful is a very powerful title. So when we decided to start our own network, we wanted a good title. So we added it under Our Lady. And the focus of Virgin Most Powerful is to educate people in the faith, inspire them to fall deep in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. And how do we do it? We give them programs on apologetics. We give them programs on family life, uh, the cultural issues, getting involved in spreading their faith. And so we have uh, what I think one of the best bishops in the country on Virgin Most Powerful, Bishop Joseph Strickland from Tyler, Texas. He's on our network. Every week I interview him. And what does he do, Brian? He reads from the Catechism of the Catholic Church and teaches us the fundamentals of the faith. And then he talks about his tweets every week on how he's trying to get people to fall deep in love with Jesus and his church. And how do people find that station? Go to vmpr.org, download our free app, which is something that they can put on their phone or on the computer. Now, there are many stations across the country who carry us, but the best way is just put it on your phone. And that way you can hear it anywhere in the world. Uh, and also, I want to mention that we have a lot of Scott Hahn material there for free. Father Don Calloway material there they can download. Uh, we have the Divine Mercy. We have the Rosary. A lot of devotional stuff on our website and on the, on the app. So it's a free app. And that way you can stay informed on the faith. And like I say, I believe we have one of the best Catholic bishops in the country on our network every week. And he's challenging you to know your faith, which I think is essential today. Now, Lighthouse Media, of course, is in many churches across the country, yeah. teachings, and you get tremendous people, uh, CDs and things. And, and how, how to walk us through how that concept developed. Well, you know, we've been always wanting to get our cassette tapes into hands of people. And we used to put them in the back of churches. Just put a box there and let them take them. And then, you know, we never had a delivery system that would self-perpetuate. So we needed to get a, a uh, display. It was California display where we got these big displays where there was a money box where people could put their donation in. And we got into, I think, 8,800 parishes out of the 15,000 parishes in the, in the United States. And I hired a gentleman named Mark Minendorf, who works for the Augustine Institute now. And he had a very good marketing uh, mind. And uh, he and that, uh, Dave Duran and others got involved with Lighthouse in 2004 is when I started that. And then uh, we ended up turning that over to uh, the Augustine Institute probably four or five years ago, and they're doing great work with it. So I'm very blessed uh, with that being part of Lighthouse. And what I've done, Brian, is I've started things and then walked away um, start, I started St. Joseph Radio. I was involved with the St. Joseph Foundation. And I'm sure there's going to be a diet time when Virgin Most Powerful is going to be passed on to another individual because I'm in my 60s and I like succession plans. I like things to grow uh, after that founder finds something and then starts it. You got to make sure that you have the right people. And I believe that's what God wants us to continue so that it's not dependent upon the founder. Got it. Got it. You know, it's interesting because I think when people get so filled with the love of the church, sure. and understand the, the Blessed Mother and the Eucharist and things, they, they can't 
contain that love within themselves. You know, it, it's like the rays of mercy behind me coming out of Jesus's heart. They're yeah. going out and they penetrate. And that's really what you've been doing. But yet we find such a uh, feebleness and timidity in Catholics. And maybe it's a fear of saying something wrong or they don't know their faith or whatever, but you, you, you developed how people develop tools, how to evangelize. Could you? I did. I did. You know what, Brian, I spent my time for the last 10 or 12 years since I got this book, it was a bestseller from Ignatius press. Archbishop um, Gomez, the president of the Bishop state uh, conference has endorsed my book he says some crazy things. I paid him $50,000 to say this. No, not really, Brian. He says, Terry Barber has been one of the finest evangelists in the Catholic Church. It's on the back of the book. But all I really do is tell stories. I, when we were at the conference to get together last month, we were telling, I was telling stories of evangelization. And so what I do is I teach people how to give their personal testimony. And whenever I ask people, Brian, in a room of 100 people, how many of you have been taught to give your personal testimony? One or two percent other people stand up or raise their hand. And I'm convinced that this is essential for us to share the gospel is to tell, be able to tell your story of how you fell in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. You know, it reminds me of uh, being involved in the local chamber of commerce. You got to get up at meetings and tell a little bit about your business and, and what you do and what you love about it and things. And some people get up and they, blah, 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 and, it can, and it takes time. It's a skill. You have to learn it, but, it's so important to be able to stand up and stand up for what you believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what, Brian, what I do in my book is I teach people the basic, what we call the 10 commandments of evangelization. And once they understand these 10 commandments, they, you, you get knowledge sometimes gives you power in the sense of your knowledge, confidence to go out and share your testimony but also how to handle objections in a real Christian way. I have a principle. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's the key to evangelization. Not so much knowing the Bible, which is important, but I give an example, Brian, of a gentleman who was at one of the largest conferences in the United States. It's called the Religious Ed Congress in Anaheim, California. 40,000 people go every February. And there were some anti-Catholics screaming at us as we walk in saying that you're going to go to hell. And, you know, they were just very rambunctious to say the least. Well, there were some people arguing with them and I said, don't argue. Watch. So I went in, I, wa I was walking in. I knew they would have uh, it cost me. And I said, excuse me, can I ask you a question? And Brian, this is what Jesus did. He who asks questions has control. You call people by name and ask them a question. What is your name? Mike, Mike, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What is it? Can you tell me how you fell in love with Jesus? I'm asking this anti-Catholic guy. He takes 15 minutes to tell me he was on drugs, alcohol, it was a womanizer, and it was the blood of Jesus that washed him clean, and now he's on fire for the faith. And I said, congratulations, that's a beautiful testimony. Mike, can I ask you another question? Yeah, can I tell you my story of how I fell in love with Jesus? What's he going to say, no? Of course he's going to say, bring it on. I love testimonies. So I give him my testimony about the Eucharist, about Our Lady. And, you know, uh, he listened. And we, we weren't arguing with each other. I said, could we agree that we should pray with each other right now and ask God's blessing upon each one of us? So here's the point. I turned it around. So I teach people not to win arguments. I teach people how to love people with the truth that sets them free. That, that's a beautiful way to put it. and. Uh... Edith Stein said something, uh, you know, always speak the truth, but do it in love. And, yep. you know, you're not going to convince anybody with screaming and shouting. That's for sure. That's for sure. Walk, walk me through some of those 10 points. you. you okay. know. The first point is thou shall always pray. And this is uh, very, very important. I give, uh, I think people like Frank Sheedy always said, who was a ev great evangelist, pray before the blessed sacrament. And, because that's our first priority. We need to know Jesus Christ. I, I actually encourage people on two books, The Soul of the Apostolate, which is pr printed by Tan, uh, and because that's a good book for spirituality. And then, of course, um, uh, St. Francis de Sales' book, uh, Introduction to Devout Life. Those are two good books 
to introduce you to the prayer life because without prayer, you're just a clanging, you know, noise of, you know, it's just, it's on the natural level. We need to bring it to the supernatural and we need to have that personal relationship through prayer before we go out and evangelize. So we always need to pray without ceasing. Can I, can I jump in on that? Absolutely. I'm off. I know it's going to hit me. No, it reminded me of um, in the interior castle with Teresa of Avila. You know, she talks about the, the outer castles where many humans live and they don't really realize we have an interior life. But right. when you enter the, the door to opening into the interior life is prayer. And that's just what you said. That yeah. prayer is important if you're going to enter into the interior castles of spirituality. Absolutely. And number two is thou shall be prepared. This is what a lot of people are not prepared. They need to know their faith. That's why I encourage people with their Bible and catechism, study it every day. I give an example of a, we used to put family, con we still do family conferences, even till now that COVID's over, we have our family conference in August at the Midwest Conference in Wichita, Kansas. Well, maybe 20 years ago, a young man came up to me and said, Mr. Barber, I want to thank you. I said, what do you don't thank me? Thank Jesus. He says, no, what happened was Tim Staples cassette tapes on Our Lady and Bishop Sheen, uh, Scott Hahn. I've been studying these guys and I was going to a, a Bible camp last summer and it was Protestant. And when they found out, you know, they say, who you, where, who give us your name and where you're from. When they found out I was from St. Mary's church in Wichita, they said, you're Catholic. You guys worship Mary. And I was able to walk them through what we actually teach about devotion wow. to Mary. And I want to thank you. I said, well, <clears throat> thank Jesus. But my point to you is we all should have that knowledge so that we can share the gospel. But what happens, Brian, is a lot of people just don't have that knowledge. And they're like, well, I don't know why I go to confession. John 20. What? That's in the Bible? I can't, I'm shocked. Yeah, we should know the Bible. It's our family heirloom. But unfortunately, Brian... For whatever reason, many Catholics today are still at the first grade level on their faith. They might be scientists. They might be even doctors, <laughs> but they don't know their faith. Am I onto something? So true. So <laughs> yeah, I think. So there you go for that. But if you want me to go through them all, yeah, the let's go through third them. one, thou shall be intentional. Uh, I'll give you an example. You'll like this story. I think I might have told it at the conference. But it's being, we're on a, a men's, we're at a father-son hike in the Grand Canyon up in um, Arizona. And we have a priest, we have a brother, and we have mass, we have rosary every day and conferences. And we're looking at this beautiful waterfall. And all of a sudden, some guys from Hell's Angel Motorcycle Group are walking down and they're using some foul language. And the leader of our group says, I'm going to tell those guys to shut up. And I said, well, before you do that, can we invoke our guardian angel for a little help? Because, you know, the unemployment rate for guardian angels is way too high. Put them to work. He says, yeah, go ahead. What are you going to do? I said, well, watch. So I use the principles about, answer, about uh, questioning people, calling them by name. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm 50 feet away. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah, what is it, dude? I said, can you guys tell me which construction company built this beautiful waterfall? Was it from Phoenix or from Los Angeles? They look at me and they go, dude, what have you been smoking? They thought I was high. I said, no, I haven't been smoking anything. Uh, guys, I, would you also agree that, that God made this waterfall? Yes or no? They say, okay, we can agree that God made the waterfall. Then I said, guys, do you think it'd be a good idea to thank God for this beautiful waterfall? Well, I guess that's okay, too. Yeah, let's thank God. Well, before we do that, let me introduce you to Father Bob, Brother John, and we're a church group coming, and we're delighted to have you come and pray with us. Do you see how that got turned around from a confrontation to tell them to shut up? And now we're, they're praying with us. No more bad language. We spent 15, 20 minutes evangelizing them on what we're doing. And they were cool with it. The point I'm saying is thou shall be intentional. They, you see what you get, and they got it. All right, number four, thou shall not get discouraged. You can't get discouraged. People say, oh, I will. they said no. That's none of your business. If they, don't, if they reject the gospel after you share it, that's not your problem. And really, it's God and them. You shared it. If you did it the best you could, then that's what you do. Then I'll give you an example. You don't want to get discouraged. Well, I printed a book. Uh, maybe, Dr. Ryan, you remember Father, remember, uh, Father Ken Roberts? Does that name sure. ring a bell? Sure. Hey, well, he was a good friend of mine back in the 80s. 
And I printed his book, Father Robert's Answers, Jimmy Swaggart, about 75,000 copies, and in English and Spanish. Well, out here in California, there's a group called Calvary Chapel who is very anti-Catholic. And by golly, they uh, had an ex-priest speaking at their, at their church, and they invited us Catholics to come and see why you shouldn't be a Catholic. They leafleted our, our parking lot at my parish at St. Christopher's. So I was about 25 years old at the time. So I uh, got the boys together and we handed out those books and the easement, which is like before you go into the parking lot. And I said, tonight's topic is on Catholicism. Here's your book. Well, I handed out about a thousand copies and then I get in there. And unfortunately the priest, former priest is uh, saying all kinds of crazy things. So I wanted to raise my hand and ask a question, but they didn't let me do it. So what happened was, uh, Excuse me. One person answer, uh, raised his hand. He got. He said, my good friend Terry Barber from St. Joe Radio has a question. Bottom line is, I said, first of all, I said, people, would you go to a deserter to find out about the army? No. Then don't go find out about the Catholic Church from him. You, I've got Bishop Sheen cassette tapes for everybody. Because I pointed out the errors that he was bringing forth. Well, what's the point? Out of all thousand people, only one that I know of, that I know of, came back to the Catholic faith. I have no idea what the others did. It's none of my business. Right, so right. that's my point is that we don't we're, look at results. We look at, did we love, did we give people the truth? And I, I, share the, I share that story, Brian. Why do I share it? Because sometimes we know people for 30, 40 years, but we've never shared the gospel with them. I'll give you an example of divine mercy, you know, because you're a big promoter of that. The problem was, this man was an attorney with his partner for 30 years and his partner got cancer and he was dying. And the wife of the other doctors, other, the other attorney said, why don't you bring him divine mercy, put cards, bring him some rosaries, you know, tell him about Jesus. And when he went to tell the dying man about Jesus, the dying man said, Hey Mac, if it was so important, why'd you wait 30 years to tell me? I don't believe it's important. See, that's why there's an urgency don't wait until the guy's dying on his deathbed to tell people about Jesus. Do it now. Right. And, you know, the Lord even told Faustina that uh, he rewards for the effort and not the results. There you go. There you right go. The and he also said discouragement is one of the greatest obstacles to holiness. Yep. Things aren't working out the way we want them to. So yep. what's, what's your next step? Next there? one. Thou shall be kind. I have a, a very a famous priest, Father Lavosik. He wrote The Hidden Power of Kindness from Sophia Press. Get that book. It's powerful. Remember, I always say people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I bring this up because if you think about it, according to the four, four Gospels, Jesus performed 75% of his miracles when he was interrupted. Think about that. In other words, how many times you get interrupted? I get interrupted all the time. But I try to make it focus to think, hey, Jesus got interrupted all the time. Smile, take a deep breath, answer their question. Because that's when Jesus, that's the model that he said. And I think this, a smile is a small form of enthusiasm. And that's one of the principles I work on. And so how hard is it to smile? And this, the word enthusiasm comes from Theo, God is in you. So a smile is a small form of saying, you're enthusiastic about Jesus. And another one, okay, number seven, thou shalt ask questions. It was 325 BC when Socrates said, he who asks questions has control. But if you think about it, it was Matthew chapter 16, 18, uh, and where, uh, where we're talking about whose image is on the coin. Jesus says, you know, uh, if he rendered to Caesar, what is Caesar? And to God, what is to God? The point of it is when you ask questions, you call people by name. And if I say, Brian, can I ask you a question? I got your attention. So there's a process in evangelization. Attention, interest, desire, and action. How do I get your attention? Call you by name. How do I get your interest? You show and explain. Show the gospel. Show them, read it to them. And then enthusiasm is what really, you're convicted. If they see that you're convicted about the gospel, they know it. It's not just a phony baloney. And that's what brings they, the action. They say, I want what you have. So I just kind of simplified it, Brian, but there's more commandments, but the questions are very, very important. And uh, the eighth commandment, I'll get through it, is 
thou shalt admit when you're wrong. It's so important that you don't have all the answers. Nobody does. Right. So if you can't, if you can't answer the question, I give it on the radio. I'll say tomorrow, I'm going to go research that. I'll get back with you. Thanks for the question. You know, in that sense, uh, brings up of the virtue of humility. Oh, absolutely. The, the Blessed Mother told Faustina that the three most virtues, most pleasing to God, was she said the first one, yeah, the like is humility, 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 which always leads me to think about real estate and location, location, location. <laughs> You're real. <laughs> That's humility, 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 like hammer. We we can't lose track of that great virtue. Yeah. And, you know, I'll give you an example how God can work in so powerful ways. I was at a woman's conference giving a talk and a woman came up to me at the table and said to me, do you remember me? And I said, well, I well, refresh my memory. I don't. She says, well, back in 1975, uh, you taught me religious ed at my parish for the teenagers. Mm -hmm. I Okay. And she, and I said, I, I, I can believe it. St. Christopher's. Yeah. She says, and I stopped going to your class. And I said, well, I don't blame you. I was not very good at what I did. She said, no, the reason I stopped going is because you said in the class that if you ever got pregnant outside of wedlock to go visit Jesus in the blessed sacrament, and he'll give you the answer to keep that baby. So she said, that's what happened to me. And when I went to the blessed sacrament, because my boyfriend was trying to tell me to abort the baby. You were there praying. And I took that as a sign from God that I should keep the baby. So I said, well, praise God. I'm happy for you. You know? And then she said, I want to introduce you to my daughter. Well, that just you know, was overwhelming. This woman comes up, says, this is the man that helped me, you know, make the decision to keep you. She gives me a big bear hug. I'm in tears. She it overwhelmed me. That's the point we don't know all the things that happen when sharing the faith we shouldn't know actually it's best that we don't know because god knows and that's what's more important but we don't know the little smile the little little kind hidden power of kindness that changed somebody i know a person who became a catholic because my brother would go visit jesus in the blessed sacrament and he was reverent before the blessed sacrament and the man told me 20 years later that that's what got him to become a Catholic. He wanted what your brother had. So people are watching yeah. and we just have to, you know, share the gospel and not worry about results. Okay. Number 10, don't be afraid. What did St. John Paul II say? That was when I started my apostolate. Wow. You know, don't be afraid. <clears throat> and um, so it's important for all of us to say that now that uh, we are in need of, of, of having boldness right now because the world acts like God doesn't exist. Yeah. So we have to bring the presence of God because living in the presence of God is the key to evangelization. I could keep going on, but I better not. Go ahead, Brian. No, I was just going to, uh, <laughs> before we kind of wrap up the show, I, I found a quote out of St. Faustina's diary that I thought was very applicable. Um, she wrote in her diary, I kept praying the rosary all the while, and toward dawn, these things vanished, and I was able to get some sleep. When I entered the chapel in the morning, I heard a voice in my soul. You are united to me, fear nothing. But know, my child, that hate and sate hates you. He mm -hmm. hates every soul. He mm -hmm. burns with a particular hatred for you because you have snatched so many souls from his dominion. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, You'll never know how many people have learned the truth and had a conversion of the heart and got closer to Jesus and Our Lady through all the great works you've been doing. Terry, tell us again, where can they get your book at there that we well, just go to vmpr.org or they can call 877-526-2151. I have a daily radio show Monday through Friday with Jesse Romero called The Terry and Jesse Show. And then on Tuesdays, I do the Bishop Strickland Hour. And on Fridays, I have the Bible with the Barbers. And there's plenty of other programming on our network. And I just want to say thanks for you, Brian. I, I, I met you for the first time in California, and I really value the work of the Marian Helpers. And I know you're tied into Divine Mercy. I'll never forget the first time 
I was attracted to Divine Mercy. It was back in 1980, right after it was approved in Los Angeles. Our local bishop allowed us to have an event with about 2,000 people showing up, uh, talking to us about Sister Faustina. And to be honest with you, in 1980, I had no idea who she was. It was like brand new. And that's the first time that I was introduced to uh, St. Faustina. Work. It was just, it was, you know, Sister Faustina at the time. But I say that because look at the amount of, of uh, blessings that have come through promotion of divine mercy. I can, I, I think of, uh, if I can just share one story with you uh, that to me exhibits divine mercy in its real true sense. There was a story that the Opus Angelorum, the priest of the Holy Cross, told me that happened in Germany right after World War II. There was a gentleman who was walking down a country road, and unfortunately, back then, Germany was pretty roughed up by the Allies during the war, so people really didn't have a lot to you know, where they could live or eat. So this man was walking down the road, and he heard some ladies screaming, help, help, help. And in the lake, the nearby lake, there was a little boy drowning, and none of the ladies could swim. So this gentleman swam and in, went into the lake and jumped in and swam to save the uh, little boy's life. And the interesting thing about it, the mother was so ecstatic. You know, you saved my son's life. Can I give you some money? And he says, I don't need any money. And then he says, uh, the woman says, well, can I at least give you a good meal to eat? Yeah. He says, I'm hungry. So they give him a great meal. And when it's time to leave, the little boy was wearing a miraculous medal like the one I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. And the mother says to the man, yeah, good job. So the man, they, they'll, you'll like this story. And so he basically says to the, to the, the woman says to the man, can I take the miraculous medal that's on my son's neck and give it to you as a way of commemorating you saving my son's life? And the guy says, yeah, that's fine. So she takes it off, puts it on his neck. And as you know, uh, many of the Germans migrated to South America. Well, they were in, down in Brazil. And that's now you move the clock up 25 years. And that man now is an old man dying in a hospital in Brazil. And the good sisters that are working there as nurses notice that he's wearing a miraculous medal. So they said to the gentleman, we know that the doctor says your heart's giving out. You might want to you know, make your peace with God. We can bring a priest here for confession. And now the old man says, oh, I don't want to go to confession. Get out of here. Forget it. Well, when the sisters went back to the convent, they told Mother Superior about their experience. Well, Mother talked about Our Lady of Fatima saying that souls are going to hell because there's no one to pray and make sacrifices for. So what you need to do, girls, is you need to sacrifice for this man and say your prayers specifically for his conversion. That's what you need to do. So the sisters did that very thing. They came back to the... Um, they came back to the hospital and, you know, we we're praying for this guy. And uh, what happens is there's a new chaplain from Germany who speaks German. He's brand new. He's a newly ordained priest. So the sisters said, hey, Father, can you go visit this guy? He's from Germany. He speaks German also. Maybe that, you know, the story is he hasn't been to confession and he's dying. So the newly ordained priest goes into the room and starts speaking German with him. And uh, they're kind of building rapport. And before long, the priest says, hey, uh, Mac, uh, I noticed you're wearing a miraculous medal. Did your mother give that to you? He says, no, no, Father. Many years ago in Germany, right after the war, I was walking down a country road, and a little boy was drowning in a lake. And I ran in and swam out there and saved the little boy from dying, and the mother gave me that medal. And the priest says, you got to be kidding me. You did that? He says, yeah. He says, that was me when I was a little boy. You saved my life. And the priest is, and a guy goes, can I hug your father? That is awesome. I'm so glad that I could save your life. And the priest says, yeah, me too. And then the man, he's just day, a day away from dying, says to father, father, will you hear my confession? He says, absolutely. He hears his confession, and the very next day he died. So that's my story of ending our little conversation. Everybody should remember that story. Share it with your friends, because I think that's divine mercy you know, um, at its best. That's awesome. You know, Terry, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on uh -huh. Mercy Unbound. Just keep up the great work. You, and, uh, 
people listening or watching the show at Mercy Unbound, drbryanthatcher.com. You can also listen to the podcast on the major platforms. And uh, please subscribe. There's no charge. Please share this on the social media with your friends and contacts. We've got to get Catholics to wake up in the pews instead of being dead bones. And uh, let's get the truth out there. And again, Terry, thank you so much. And everyone have a blessed day and God bless. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video portion. The podcast can be heard at anchor.fm slash drbryan, B-R-Y-A-N, Thatcher, T-H-A-T-C-H-E-R, and on all the major podcast forums. I would love to speak at your church or conference, and please consider supporting our efforts to spread the truth to a hurting world. Thank you again. And for more information, go to the website at drbryanthatcher.com.